Look, we've all posted very awkward, cringy, weird things on the internet. And if you haven't, good for you, I guess. <laughs> but I have. At the age of 18, 19, when I fully became conscious that I am a human being, um, going through life, I will eventually obtain or get to my inevitable death, I have been in a state of existential crisis. And at the time, how I knew best to express myself was through writing on Instagram. <laughs> So I would take pictures and I would write long-winded, uh, very philosophical thoughts uh, about my ponderings. So a little bit kind of like what I do on YouTube, just it would be on Instagram, and it was when I was 18, 19. <laughs> so I thought today it would be fun to go through that together. So I'm going to go back through my Instagram posts, and I'm going to read to you all of the things I've ever written, all of the cringy things I've written, all of the existential deep things I've written, thinking that maybe if I express myself, people might understand or people might feel less alone in the world. At least that was my intent at the time. So, let's get started. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Lil Alex. I play video games and I talk about life, so this is what I do. If you like me, if you don't, um, click off, I guess. But if you like me, if you like my personality, um, you know what to do. I don't have to tell you. Uh, and, I appreciate you f and I appreciate you for being here. So how about we get this started? I have a new setup here. This is my streaming setup, but I thought it would be fun to make this video in this particular setup. So. Let's get started, shall we? Yes? Great. <laughs> so I'm gonna move over here and then I'll post the actual legitimate screenshots on this side of the screen so you guys can read it with me, okay? <laughs> I tend to express myself better through writing than I do with uh, speaking. So I think that this would be an interesting um, experiment to see if I can fully, truly um, bring out the essence of what it is that I'm talking about and to see if I've changed my mind or if there's anything I could add to the my 19 year old self. <laughs> I'll show you guys the pictures as well as the posts and I'll block out all of the other information, okay? So I'm gonna read this to you, okay? When she felt weak and alone, she often looked at the skies and waited for life to give her a sign. If only she knew, she'd have to wait forever. At the time, I never really believed uh, in something that is called synchronicity. It was never something that I've gotten to see in real life. I never believed in souls or signs or anything that um, told me that there was something that existed outside of myself, um, a guide, as you will. And. Only recently I've actually experienced that. I've experienced literally speaking to the skies, speaking to my spirit guides, and literally getting confirmation that there is something that is watching me, helping me, and guiding me through life. This post almost comes across as so desperate, right? And I get that. I get that desperation, that need, and that desire to figure it out. Whatever it is that at the time I needed to figure out. I guess it, at the end of the day, I needed to figure out the same thing that I'm trying to figure out now, which is a sense of certainty in what it is that I am doing. And I think it's interesting because the photo is so beautiful. <laughs> like, I, I know I'm like gassing myself up, but just the the line of the clouds as well as the line of the birds i think makes it that in a way there's a hope that there's something that exists and i think my 19 year old self kind of knew that knew that you know maybe i'd have to wait forever to get a sign but only that hope 
will drive me to wait forever. And with that hope, maybe eventually I could experience what it means to get a sign or what it means to finally get that nudge of what it is that I'm trying to look for. So it's interesting. Anyway. <laughs> okay, here's another one. If I grew up without being put down every time I tried to express myself, maybe I wouldn't be stuck in such a rut. Nothing left but to power through the fear just to be stuck again in this vicious cycle called life. At the end of the day, what something that I've learned is that people don't really care about you. People don't really care about me. Um, throughout my high school time, I was so self-absorbed. I was always constantly worrying about what people thought of me. And so I always thought that people were out to get me, out to put me down, out to sabotage me. And I think that that was just myself trying to sabotage myself because I was scared. I was scared of doing whatever it is that I wanted to do. And so I would sabotage myself and I would create this narrative that people were against me, trying to sabotage me. And so, yeah, nothing left but to power through the fear, but also realizing that at the end, nobody, nobody really cares outside of high school. All of these people that I thought would absolutely demolish me, put me down, was just a, an illusion that I made because I was so scared to go for what it is that I truly wanted. And yeah, now that I look at, at this post, I'm thinking, thank God I'm, I don't care anymore. <laughs> thank God I really don't care anymore. And that I need to put the blame on other people for being stuck. Uh, it's only me and myself that makes me stuck not anybody else. So yeah, I just, so I don't, I don't know. I find it so poor me. <laughs> okay. So here's another one. As the days pass, I hope to one day feel like I belong somewhere in this world. The worries of feeling outcasted or even disregarded continue to rot my brain in ways I can't even express. Conversations begin to feel endless all while everything becomes meaningless. I thought that this feeling would disappear, but it caught up to me once more, and I feel like I can't help from drowning. I think that this is still something that I struggle with, like a sense of belonging somewhere. It seems like I'm still obsessed with the idea of being like outcasted by other people. Now I think I'm more concerned with not being understood as like truly and deeply for who I am rather than being outcasted. Um, but it deals with the same type of themes, right? It's, it's still feeling or the needing to belong somewhere or to find the people that could truly understand me. And I've noticed that throughout my life, at least the last seven or eight years, I don't really belong anywhere. Whenever I try to place myself in a certain environment, um, it never feels wholly and truly my own. It almost feels like I have to jump from bubble to bubble because the entirety of who I am doesn't fit the entirety of a bubble ever. And so maybe the reason or maybe the explanation is that I don't belong anywhere. Or maybe I belong right here. Maybe I belong in the space that I make for myself and for other people. And maybe because I don't feel like I belong anywhere, my goal or my purpose is to make people feel like they belong. To make people feel content with themselves to make people feel understood and it's funny because sometimes i used to struggle i used to struggle with the notion of small talk oftentimes small talk used to feel draining to me it used to feel like a like lack of purpose it didn't feel like i was gaining anything from from it 
and it felt so superficial. But I've changed my mind a lot on that. I think that I've started to gain more confidence in creating the conversations that I want to have. So if there's anything that I want to talk about on a deeper level, like I should be the one to facilitate those conversations and not expect them to come from other people. And so if the conversation begins to feel endless, then it is my responsibility to fix the conversation if I feel that the conversation is draining. And so I've changed my mind a lot about small talk. And I always find it funny when people uh, say this, when people say like, oh, I, I can't handle small talk. It's too superficial for me. But at the same time, it's like we need small talk. Not everything can be deep all the time. And oftentimes you can create meaningful relationships by it beginning through small talk. And it's just up to you to really reel the conversation in the direction that you want it to. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, let's find another one. Let's find another one. Let's find another one. Let's find another one. Da, 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 da. Okay, here's an excellent one. Okay. For me, every single moment I live through right now feels like a fleeting one, mostly because I'll never be able to remember it the exact way I would like to. Each sight, smell, and ambient feeling will dissipate into thin air the instant I live through another moment. They will always be short-lived, an almost insignificant glimpse into my young adult life, which is why I feel such a need to document everything, as a fear that I'll forget every single sensation I felt during a certain time in my life. Maybe reality isn't meant to be perfect. Maybe I'm just too idealistic. I was cooking. I'm not gonna lie. I was fucking cooking there. Holy shit. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say because I, I still feel this to this day. I often feel bittersweet when I go through life or when I go through moments or memories because I know that it's gonna end and I know that all I'll be left with is the imagery or the what my mind conjures up of the memory, right? I will never be able to remember the authenticity of the moment as deeply as I experience it in that moment. And so after a particular moment passes, all I'm left with is what my mind perceives the memory to be. And I was so obsessed with truly feeling presently in the moment through everything that I go through to the point that it would almost depress me. Like, I would often feel bittersweet after every single time I would do something. And I feel like that, that's such an idealistic way to think, almost like a perfectionistic way to think. Like I'm trying to maintain the essence of the memory in its truest form. And that's why I would document things. And at the time, I would just take pictures and I would write my thoughts almost kind of like a journal entry, kind of as I'm doing right now with YouTube, because I wanted to document my young adult life and I wanted to show my thoughts in hopes that maybe, like I'm doing right now, going through it, and realizing that these existential moments of, of deep thought are still things that I resonate with to this day. I mean, really, like, this is like, <laughs> as a fear that I'll forget every single sensation I felt during a certain time in my life. And that's the thing with memories, is that we can never, ever truly experience them the same way. And it's, it's scary because it reminds us of time passing. And then you realize, or what I realize is that nothing else matters but the present moment. Everything that happened in the past, all that doesn't exist anymore. Not really. All we can do is live through it through our memories, through where our mind conjures up. And it's the same with the future. That doesn't exist yet, it's only in this present moment. 
and that's freeing yeah but also kind of scary at the same time and it makes you want to be present and enjoy the moment as as profoundly as as deeply as you possibly can and so that's why i kind of wanted to do youtube as well as i get to document all of these thoughts and and maybe i don't know maybe my mind would change maybe my mind won't i don't know also look at this picture i look <laughs> i look so young oh my god what am i wearing <laughs> Literally, what am I wearing? This is terrible. <gasps> Look at my hair. Oh my god, I'm such a baby. <laughs> but I had some good I had some good thoughts as a baby. Holy. <sighs> Alright, on to the next one. Okay, here's another one. Seven seven. A number as lucky as can be. One that taught me the impossible lesson that intuition is the strongest and most undeceivable feeling each of us have. The amount of heartbreak and emotional anxiety throughout these past few months have taught me a lot about how all of it could have been avoided if I trusted my intuition. One of the best gifts I could ever give myself is finally learning how to do that. Here's to many more life lessons caused by bad decisions. <laughs> if any of you guys know, my birthday is 7-7. At the time, I wasn't totally really into numerology, but I always felt that I was very lucky with my birthday. And in this particular moment, which was a post that was like a day after my birthday, I get super uh, emotional and super broody uh, and melancholic on my birthday, I guess. Same as when I fucking turned 20. But <laughs> and at this particular moment, I think something that I often tend to do and I still struggle with to this day is I push down my intuition and I push down my intuition and I mistake it for anxiety and I think that oftentimes my intuition it's hard for me to follow my intuition because a lot of the times your intuition isn't necessarily telling you what you want to hear or what you want to do. It guides you in a certain specific way. And all of us have that intuition. We're either more in tune with it or not. And I realize now, and I guess as I did at the time, that my intuition is the strongest thing to follow. And that's for anybody, right? You're either in tune with your intuition or you're not, or you know that it's there and you choose to ignore it. And I still struggle with this to this day. You know, I I have trouble following my intuition because sometimes it tells you what you don't want to do. And it takes a lot of courage to follow your intuition. And I often beat myself up over it. A lot of the times it isn't easy. And... At the end of the day, all you can do is you have to try to discern what's the difference. And generally, your intuition guides you to the best direction you possibly could go. Alright, here's another one. This is a good one. <laughs> they're all good. I, don't, I haven't even read them yet, and I know that they're good. <laughs> it's crippling how each of us, no matter how much we rate ourselves on the crazy meter, struggle with a certain type of compulsion. Whether it's leaning towards abusive drug use or an unfulfilling emptiness that feeds off immediate validation. All of us contain our own set of dysfunctional traits. Some can be summed up by simple adjectives, yet most can't be described by short definitions. In result, we should not only work on self-awareness and modesty, but also acquire a more empathetic view on human faults and mental incapacities. So instead of constantly suppressing my obsessive need to perfect everything in my life, I'm on my way to accepting the little bits and pieces that create my personality, even the annoying parts, because only then will life feel fulfilling. Hopefully. <laughs> I've always struggled with perfection and idealism, and often and I would work on myself constantly to be the most perfect version that I could be. And it comes with a lot of obsessive things 
thoughts, obsessive worries about certain things, about how to better myself, how to be a better person, how to have that validation that I'm doing well. But at the same time, I realized that by doing so, by hating the parts of myself that weren't always perfect, the dysfunctional traits that we all have, that we try to ignore, I realized that by ignoring them, I ended up just hating myself even more, which is obvious, right? For me, I've always worked at trying to be more self-aware as much as I can. And even in my real life, one of my goals is to not judge anybody, to kind of create a space where people can truly, fully feel like they're not being judged by me. And even in my day-to-day life at work, I try to create those spaces for my coworkers. Let them know, let them feel that they could fully be who it is that they want to be. If anything that they wanted to talk to me about, to feel like they're not being judged for it. I think that our whole lives we get put into these boxes. Into these boxes that tell us what we should and shouldn't believe in. And when another box maybe of a different shape of different values comes along, that they hate each other because they disagree on certain things. But at the end of the day, we're all still boxes. We're all still people on this earth. All of us are on the same path, but just acquire different things along the way. And we're all human beings with our faults, with the things that we do, with, with really shitty behavior that we throw around with our traumas, with our good parts, we're imperfect. I'm imperfect. We're all imperfect. And so I think that this obsession, especially nowadays, with people like consistently like overworking themselves to trying to be like the best version of themselves that they can be, it almost it gets so dehumanizing. And with YouTube, I can showcase all of the things that I think about. And hopefully, maybe people that enjoy it or relate, they can watch this video and feel a little bit less alone. And maybe in their day-to-day life, they feel like they're crazy. Maybe they feel like, you know, thoughts are too much or you're too perfectionistic or you're too this or you're too that. But at the end of the day, we're all enough on our own. And I think I struggle a lot with feeling like I'm enough, as as probably a lot of you know already. And so seeing this post, it makes me feel like I'm on the right path because I'm trying to let go of this need to perfect everything. Even through YouTube, a lot of the things that I stressed about doing was because I wanted it to be perfect and by worrying about wanting it to be perfect I never ended up doing anything I just stood there twiddling my thumbs I made excuses for myself same with anything else I've ever done in my life and so it's nice to see to go back to look at this and to see how much I've changed and how little I've changed at the same time. And see, we shouldn't accept everything, all the negative behaviors of somebody else. It's on your own discernment. It's based off of your own boundaries that you have to respect for yourself as well. I'm not saying that you should accept everyone's negative behavior. You should discern what it is that you are willing to deal with. But also keep an open mind, too. And keep an open mind more so for yourself and less so for others. Because you are stuck with yourself for the rest of your life. And I've, for a long time, hated myself. Hated all my shitty traits. I would beat them down, I would beat myself up for for everything, 
for not being this perfect person. And eventually I got tired of it. You get tired of it. Almost you can't do it anymore. Then you think, what's the point? And so I still do this to this day to work on my self-awareness and my modesty. It's really important to me. And to be more empathetic to the people around me. But also make sure I keep my own boundaries. And I'm always going to be the person that's open-minded. Open-minded to different ideas. And I think we spend so much of our time um, attributing things to our personality. And being in competition with other people. Trying to figure out who's right and who's wrong. Rather than sitting and trying to listen to the other person. Trying to learn something. Trying to be open. And that's what I value in my life. Is the liberation of self-expression. I think it's important for people to express themselves. Obviously, in any way they see fit. For me, it's in writing cheesy existential Instagram posts that then now turn into me making videos on the internet talking about the same stuff and to see that that's what I've always been doing even when I was younger it validates me and look, maybe I might not be the smartest I might not be the uh, most intelligent or a philosopher or whatever guru, I'm not any of those things I'm just a, a goober with the camera and some thoughts. But if you've thought of the same things, if you feel the same way, um, then maybe you feel less alone. Because I know I sure feel alone sometimes. So, um, anyways, um, I think that's it for today. I'm going to end it there. I have some other ones, but I think this video has gotten to be quite long, so... Um, if you're still watching, thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. And, um, yeah, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for watching. And I appreciate you. And I hope you have a great night. And I hope you enjoy the setup. Maybe I'll keep it. Maybe I won't. We'll see. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>